Yeah. All right, guys. Well, it is just the second full day of fall 20. I guess it's the first full day of fall 2022, but it is already a cold winter night there in the collapse of global industrial civilization of bugs in a jar farm. It is a Friday night. That would be Friday, September 23rd, 2022. And so since it is Friday, you know what that means. It's time for my ecological meltdown round of ramp where I check in with our friends over at mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls to see what is on their mind and I just recognize I forgot I was uh, <coughs> at a Doomer meetup a week ago tonight taking a vacation from the Doomosphere and did not get around to last week's Manga Bay Roundup so I'm going to try to cram two weeks in here so I'm not sure how long this will go I'll just so I won't be hitting very many of the stories since I'm trying to give you a twofer in one here. But let's, so we're going to go over last week's what we missed and then try to catch up this week. Good Lord, two weeks of doom. We're going to start here in British Columbia. Wow. <coughs> British Columbia delays promised protections as old growth keeps falling Two years after British Columbia's majority party promised a logging paradigm shift <coughs> to conserve what is left of the province's tall, old-growth forest, Manga Bay observed dramatic clearing on Vancouver Island and forests slated for protection. Old-growth harvesting continues across British Columbia today. Um, the BC Minister of Land Management said that the government in partnership with First Nations, with the noble savages over there, and the First Nations has deferred logging on 1.7 million hectares. That's, I don't know, what is that? A little over 4 million acres of old growth forest. But critics contest those numbers, contest those numbers and note that much of these deferrals are for scrubby alpine forests that aren't in danger of being logged anyway. So now we're going to talk about the noble savages, which are called First Nations in Canada. First Nation leaders have been tasked by the government to determine which old growth forest to protect. But this presents indigenous noble savage communities with an economic conundrum as many tribes will lose much needed logging revenue if they choose conservation. Uh, just so if, if there's anybody thinking that the noble savages in Canada are protecting old growth forest. <clears throat> they are logging the forest just like honky. Okay? And go look at the Tongass National Forest over there in Alaska for what happens when uh, you give the noble savages basically, you know, uh, Give, give them a chainsaw. They do the same thing that I do with a chainsaw. They cut down trees. Anyway. <clears throat> Today, BC has many second growth tree plantations that give the appearance of vast wooded expanses. But as Mangabe observed, these tree farms are ecological deserts that store less carbon than tall tree old growth and harbor little biodiversity as BC experiences intensifying climate impacts partly due to decades 
<coughs> of overlogging, and of course what's true in BC is true, you know, everywhere else on the planet, including in our own country. Okay, we are looking at an acid test, asking the question, are the world's oceans becoming too acidic to support life? And I'm not going to sit here and rehash what uh, ocean acidification is all about. Uh, so, uh, but the process of ocean acidification is recognized as a leading threat to ocean life. The full impacts are unknown, but at some point, reduced pH could be disastrous biologically. Researchers have designated ocean acidification as one of nine planetary boundaries whose limits, if transgressed, could threaten civilization and life as we know it. But there is debate as to whether <coughs> there is a global boundary for this process. Uh, so I guess we'll find out. I guess the debate will be settled, won't it? The ocean acidification deniers. So... Uh, don't know how they're going to tell when that boundary has been passed. All right, we have four more Brazilian indigenous environmental defenders gunned down. What a surprise. Uh, add another four. And then, uh, you know, all of these articles, I'm not going to get into it, about, you know, the upcoming election in Brazil, you know, talking about Jair Bozo Nero versus, uh, you know, this De Silva guy. And, you know, I mean, when you're going up against Jair Bozo Nero, all right, the CEO of Warehouser w would look like a good guy. So, yes, com good God, compared to Jair Bozo Nero, uh, obviously, De Silva uh, is, you know, certainly the lesser of two evils. But, uh, so, I mean, it, it, as much as I cheer on getting rid of Bozo Nero, it's uh, anybody who thinks that this De Silva dude is going to save the Amazon rainforest and save the planet ain't going to happen. Uh, the Amazon might have a few more years uh, under De Silva. It's the difference between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. If you want to know the difference between Bozo Nero and De Silva, it's the difference between Trump and Biden. Okay, it is a nuclear radiation burn on the planet versus a third degree sunburn. Just a little log. Would you let me uh, do my job here? Uh, again, I'm uh, just skipping over a lot because I got a lot to cover. I've never heard the word amnesty used as a verb. Indonesia amnesties 75 companies operating illegally inside forest areas. As many as 75 companies that have been operating illegally inside forest areas in Indonesia have been pardoned under an amnesty scheme after ponying up about 15 million dollars to receive their pardons. Hundreds more plantation, mostly meaning oil palm plantations, and mining companies will be pardoned 
officials say as the government has identified over 600 companies operating illegally inside forest areas. So, if they're operating illegally, just say, give us some money and we will amnesty you. Oh, Lord. Anyway, I gotta move on. Let's go over to Cambodia, where we find Cambodian Megadam's resurrection on the Mekong is, quote, the beginning of the end. Cambodian authorities have greenlit studies for a major hydropower dam on the Mekong River despite a ban on dam building on the river hmm. that has been in place since 2020. Plans for the 1,400 megawatt dam have been around since 2007, but the project, you know, until now has repeatedly been shelved over criticisms of its environmental impacts. This time around, the project is being championed by, they actually call themselves Royal Group, a politically connected conglomerate that was also behind the hugely controversial Lower Sesson II Dam. Uh, anyway, yep, you see how well the uh, the ban on dam building in the Mekong River is working. It's like, you know, banning uh, whatever it was we were just talking about 30 seconds ago. That uh, Okay, would you lay down, little dog? Excuse me, would you lay down, please? No, you don't need to be over here, lay down. Uh... You will not believe this, that industrial mining's tropical deforestation footprint spills beyond its concessions. Indonesia, Brazil, Suriname, and Ghana account for 80% of all tropical deforestation linked directly to industrial mining. In two out of three tropical countries, large-scale mineral extraction leads to forest loss when effects over a wider area beyond the formal mining concessions are considered. Yes. Uh, uh, Here is throwing environmentalists in jail in Vietnam. At least they aren't killing them. Uh, here's an article about illegal gold mining in Suriname. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Gold mining is the backbone of Suriname's economy. Yes. Um, one, one bill to stop the illegal mercury trade threatens to ruffle the feathers of powerful individuals with links to the gold industry, including Suriname's current vice president. Yes, I'm sure uh, gold mining in Suriname is really... Uh, anyway, guys, as I say, I'm trying to do two rants in one. Here is yet another unnecessary dam posing an outsized threat in the Mekong Basin, I guess. This isn't the main river. This is, they're getting ready to dam up the Sekong, not to be confused with the Mekong. This is the Sekong River. By the end of this year, 
restricting its water flow and blocking vital sediment from reaching the Mekong Delta in Vietnam while cutting off migration routes for a range of fish species. Experts say the energy to be generated by the dam does not justify the negative impacts calling it, quote, an absolutely unnecessary project. Do you think so? Okay, here is an article about, now it doesn't mention the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, and I guess this is the Chinese Belt and Railroad Initiative, looking at new railroad construction in Brazil. Um, good Lord. The country's rail network is expected to undergo a major expansion in the coming years with the Ministry of Infrastructure receiving 76 applications for new railroad construction and operation, <coughs> totaling 12,000 miles of new railroads since last year, 12,000 miles of new railroad in Brazil being proposed in, in, in a year. Uh, so they look, they're doing, they're looking at, you know, basically animals getting run over by trains that are already there. It doesn't say how long a stretch of railroad they studied where 4,000 mammals were killed and more than 10,000 cane toads. Now, of course in Australia you, you want to run over cane toads. And in St. Croix, Sancho knows all about the cane toads. Do you remember the, the cane toads, uh, Sancho? So I guess cane toads, do they actually come from Brazil? All right, so this is kind of an interesting headline. Even without human-driven deforestation, climate change threatens some forest. So even without human-driven deforestation, human-driven climate change threatens the few forests that aren't being directly cut down by humans. It's like here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, you, you know, whatever trees I don't cut down here, they're, they're just going to die anyway. You know, I might as well cut down every tree at Bugs in a Jar Farm because climate change is going to kill them all anyway. All right. Uh, What's going on in the Mediterranean Sea? Mind-blowing marine heat waves put Mediterranean ecosystems at grave risks. A recent study reveals the widespread effects of climate change-driven marine heat waves on the ecological communities of the Mediterranean Sea rises in sea, surf, sea surface temperatures as high as 5 degrees C, otherwise known as 9 degrees Fahrenheit, have above normal have caused die-offs in 50 different groups of animals from around the basin. These far-reaching impacts of the warming sea could devastate the fisheries on which many of the Mediterranean region's 400 million people rely. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, here is poachers poisoning wildlife in Zimbabwe. I guess it's easier instead of, just, you know, having to shoot the animals. Poisons like cyanide can be a deadly weapon for poachers, 
allowing them to kill dozens of animals without needing access to firearms. Yes, wildlife poisoning is on the rise across Africa, targeting elephants as well as pushing endangered vultures toward extinction. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. I, I love this. As a Cameroon palm oil firm gets RSPO certified, it's also found in breach. You know, it's kind of like when they discover these new species of animals and they're already critically endangered the day they're discovered. So it's like, I, I guess this big palm oil company got its, you know, its clean green certification and was found in violation <laughs> the, uh, the day it was certified. These joke palm oil certifications. Okay, so what is going on with Amazon deforestation in Brazil? Would you believe it boomed in August? Rainforest destruction in the Brazilian Amazon jumped 11% in August. I guess they mean over last year with deforestation reaching 641 square miles, an area more than 28 times the size of Manhattan. Again, this is data from the Brazilian government which I thought that Bozo Nero was saying he was no longer going to allow to be released, but this is the Brazilian governments claiming uh, 28 times the size of Manhattan uh, obliterated off the face of the planet in one month. Uh, the August tally brings rainforest clearing detected in the Brazilian Amazon since the beginning of the year uh, to 7,135 square kilometers, the highest on record dating back to 2008. Uh, deforestation has been trending higher since 2012 and has especially accelerated since 2019 when Jair Bozo Nero became president. Uh, let's see, let's do one more from last week and then we will head over to this week. Warming has set off dangerous tipping, tipping points. More will fall with the heat. A new study warns that multiple tipping points will be triggered if, if global warming exceeds 1.5 degrees C above pre-industrial levels. Yes, the researchers say humanity is already at risk of passing five tipping points, and this is a different set. This isn't the planetary boundaries. This is another set of tipping points. Okay, we got all of these different groups of tipping points. There's so many points we're tipping that now it's hard to keep track of the which group of tipping points we're tracking. Yes. The researchers say humanity is already at risk of passing five tipping points, including the melting of the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets and the mass die-off of coral reefs. Yes, and the risk will increase with each 0 0.1 degree C of warming uh, and so this is the knee slapper from last week, the, the, the most hilarious uh, thing I read in Manga Bay. We're going to wrap up last week. While many nations have committed to the 2015 Paris Agreement, which stipulates that warming should be limited to 1.5 C, 
it is unclear it is unclear whether this goal will be achieved yes uh it is unclear <laughs> whether the one and a half degree target uh will be achieved i i don't know what rhett butler's definition of clarity is Rhett Butler and everybody at Manga Bay, including whoever knows damn well uh, that, that it is perfectly clear. Anyway, moving on uh, from, from that knee slapper. So what's going on this week? All right, well, speaking of good old Rhett Butler, Rhett Butler has won 22's prestigious Heinz Award for the Environment. All right. Uh, the Heinz Awards. Uh, now, this is a big one. I, you know, Paul and Ann Ehrlich uh, and James Hansen have won it in previous years. Uh, this year's winner of the prestigious Prizes Environment Award is Manga Bay founder and CEO Rhett Butler for his work creating a popular and impactful media outlet that publishes news from nature's front line for a large global audience. Yes, which I guess includes uh, anyone listening to this. This is Teresa Hines, quote, the pace of environmental degradation deforestation and habitat loss due to human activity is devastating. But Rhett has responded with courage and dedication, creating a platform that equips the world with critical news information gathered with the highest journalistic and scientific integrity not counting little slip-ups like saying it, it, it is unclear whether uh, we'll <laughs> whether we'll be able to keep uh, global warming under one and a half C over the coming decades. Not counting a little bit of hopium, you know, Rhett, he's you know you can't win this award. Uh, this big, uh, and this is a big deal. It really is good for Rhett. But you know, it's a mainstream environmentalist award. And uh, if Rhett uh, could really be honest uh, uh, about uh, how much he knows how screwed we are, he would not be winning the award. Okay? So anyway, let's cut Rhett some slack on the apocalyptimism and say congratulations on the award. All right, speaking of apocalyptimism, U.S. charts course for adopting ropeless, ropeless fishing to reduce whale deaths. No comment needed. Here's a real life. Uh, Shaggy, sorry. New oil refinery, a huge disaster for Nigerian forest reserve. Huh. Do you think building a new oil refinery inside a forest reserve? This is the Stubbs Creek Forest Reserve. Uh, comprises nearly 116 square miles in southern Nigeria and is home to threatened wildlife and economically valuable tree species despite its official protected status as a forest reserve much of Stubbs Creek Forest Reserve's tree cover has been lost hmm, due to human activities like logging and farming and now we have a new oil refinery exacerbating deforestation in the reserve. Yes, one government official calls the development, quote, a huge disaster for 
the forest. Do you think so? Then they do this week's, uh, you know, talking about the Brazilian election. Obviously, uh, Manga Bay is going to be cheering on De Silva. Uh, but we've already been over that. All right. The continuing raging debate, how close is the Amazon tipping point? Forest loss in the east changes the equation. I actually saw this article on the mainstream media, shockingly. Scientists warned that the Amazon is approaching a tipping point beyond which it would begin to transition from a lush tropical forest into a dry, degraded savanna. This point may be reached when 25% of the forest is lost. Uh, and according to this, I don't know where they pulled this ridiculous... This, this, this is absolute BS. According to this here... Uh, I, I don't know what, what decade, what century, uh, this statistic came out that looking at the entire Amazon, you know, from one end to the other, they're claiming that 13.2% of the Amazon rainforest has been lost to deforestation. I am hitting the bullshit detected button with a hammer. 13% my ass. Uh, two years ago when I, I, I was interviewing people down there, it, it was closing in on 20%. It, absolute BS. Okay, but anyway, that's the whole thing. But when you, the map is divided into thirds it shows that 31% of the eastern Amazon has been lost. Uh, that 31% figure is critical, the report says, because the tipping point will likely be triggered in the east. When, you know, this is due to all of these complicated moisture and hydrological cycles. <coughs> that start in the east and move, you know, the, the, the western Amazon is dependent on the rain that is created in the eastern Amazon. Anyway, uh, the, the Amazon rainforest is gone. Okay. Uh, All right, what's going on with the corona panic? The corona panic dip, meaning the emissions dip, was just a blip as global emissions rebound. Yes, do you think so? Uh, I think we've been through this story. Uh, Okay, I'm pretty sure emissions will be at an all-time high in 2022. I'll be surprised if they're not. Speaking of emissions, <clears throat> emissions and deforestation, emissions and deforestation set to spike under Indonesia's biomass transition talked about this a couple of weeks ago about Indonesia's co-firing co program reducing the amount of coal used in power generation by cutting it with wood pellets will result in massive deforestation and a net emissions surge an energy policy think tank warns uh, under the government's plan, uh, up to one million hectares, two and a half million acres 
of the you know native rainforest could be cleared and then they will plant acacia and eucalyptus plantations to provide the wood pellets. And this would result in up to 489 million metric tons of emissions, a vastly greater amount than the 1 million tons in reduced emissions that co-firing is expected to achieve. The analysis also shows that if anything, Indonesia's coal consumption has only increased with higher biomass co-firing and that this trend is expected to continue through 2030 as more new coal plants are built. This is an example of Jevons' paradox. Just in case you're interested in Jevons' uh, paradox, here's an article about ocean circulation too complicated to uh, get into. All right, we have a new uh, a, 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 a new development in wildlife crime. Kidnapped chimpanzees. Armed intruders who kidnapped three young chimpanzees from a sanctuary and the DRC have threatened to kill them unless a ransom is paid for the ape's return. Good Lord. Uh, meanwhile, a seizure in Nigeria has sounded the latest alarm over growing exports of donkey parts, of donkey parts for traditional Chinese medicines. I, I didn't realize that Nigerian donkeys were a, even a wild species. There, there's no end. All right. I love it. Why is there no planet B? Yes. Two astrophysicists explain why there is no planet B. Yeah. There are around 300 billion stars just in our galaxy, with 63 billion planets similar to Earth, but none of them is quite the way we need it to be in order to survive. Not even Mars is workable. It has 100 times less air than Earth, and that is primarily carbon dioxide. Mars is also as cold as the Antarctic, so we cannot escape our ecological problems by moving to Mars, despite what uh, Elon Musk says. Quote, Earth is our unique and only home in the cosmos. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, here's an article on speciesism. Uh, I don't have time. I don't have time to get into speciesism. Uh, how about new tech? aims to track the carbon in every tree. Climate scientists and data engineers have developed a new digital platform build as the first ever global tool for accurately calculating the carbon stored in every tree on the planet. There you go, you heard it here. Um, here is uh, more news on the state of the coral reefs. More droughts are coming, and the Amazon cannot keep up.
up to 50% of rainfall in the Amazon comes from the forest itself as moisture is recycled from the trees to the atmosphere. This is what they were talking about in the eastern Amazon where this most of this happens. In severe droughts, when the forest loses more water to evaporation than it receives from rain, the trees begin to die. Uh, for every three trees that die due to drought, a fourth tree will also die. <laughs> As trees are lost and the forest dries up, parts of the Amazon will rapidly approach a tipping point where they will transition into a degraded savanna-like ecosystem with few to no trees. The southern and southeastern Amazon, according to this article, are the most vulnerable regions to tipping thought it was the east. Now they're saying it's the south. Uh, here, deforestation and fires are at their most extreme, driven largely by cattle ranching and soy farming. Here is an article about the online bird trade. Uh, Good Lord. Uh, all right. Three more. Bear with me. Uh, don't you uh, don't you love this one? European Union votes to keep woody biomass as renewable energy, ignoring climate risk. Despite growing public opposition, the European Parliament voted this week not to declassify woody biomass as renewable energy. The forest biomass industry quickly declared victory while supporters of native forests announced their plan to continue the fight. Uh, the EU likely renewed its commitment to burning wood as a source of energy to save the planet, largely to help meet its target of cutting EU carbon emissions by 55% by 2030, something it likely could not achieve without woody biomass which a carbon accounting loophole counts as carbon neutral, equivalent to wind and solar power. However, scientific evidence shows that burning wood pellets is a major source of carbon. Yes, uh, the EU also likely continued its embrace of biomass this week as it looks down the barrel of Russian threats to cut off natural gas supplies this winter. Yep. Uh, they, you know, they're, they're claiming all these environmental safeguards, but these provisions include le legal loopholes and were not backed with monitoring or enforcement commitments. Yep. All right. What's going on with deep sea mining? Gee, regulator approves first deep sea mining test. The International Seabed Authority, uh, the intergovernmental body responsible for overseeing deep sea mining operations and for protecting the oceans, recently granted approval for a mining trial to commence. Yes. Uh, the company doing the, you know, the fox guarding the hen house is aiming to start annually extracting 1.3 million metric tons of nodules as early as 2024. Uh, 
mining opponent said the ruling took them by surprise. I'm not the least bit surprised. And they feared it would pave the way for exploration to begin in the near future despite growing concerns about the safety and, necess and necessity of deep sea mining. Okay, and to wind up, zero deforestation commitments are fundamentally limited in tackling deforestation, study argues. Yes, do you think so? Uh, anybody uh, thinking for one minute that these uh, greenwashing BS zero deforestation commitments. I mean, is anybody buying this crap? Anyway, uh, I've got to wrap up this rant and uh, go hibernate under about three sleeping bags in the new tiny house, which has no heat. Oh, well, uh, I'm going to hibernate. I will see you guys in about May. Enjoy the winter without me. Bye, guys. All right, little dog. I know that was brutal, but we had to do two. Rinse in one.